Um, so, uh, dear Professor McCormick, it's a great pleasure for me to um, uh, that, that you are today with us, and um, I'm very much grateful that you decided to come and visit and participate in our conference on Europe unification processes and Christian values. And uh, um, I'm, I'm very much indebted to you for this, and I, and I hope that uh, we will bear good fruits uh, in the future with regard to our future cooperation. Now, let me let me ask you a few questions now. Please. I would like to ask um, uh, basically three questions, or maybe four questions, and I would like to begin with uh, with a question on philosophy, and then I suggest we move to the question on Europe, and after that we go to Ukraine. And if we find it appropriate, maybe we will come back to a philosophy issue again at the very end of okay. this. Okay. And let me phrase them uh, in, in the following way. So the first question has to do with, with philosophy. And uh, when you were presenting your uh, presentation at the conference, you mentioned that um, uh, you raised the question about the, uh, about the philosophy itself. And you asked, what should philosophy look like? Uh, at the end of this bloodiest century and at the beginning of the poorest century, uh, which we may be facing now, and I'm wondering what stands behind that thinking. Uh, people mm -hmm. might expect you telling them that uh, uh, that this is philosophy of uh, of uh, I know morality is of utmost importance, or maybe this is metaphysics that has to be revived. But you are kind of phrasing it somehow differently, and if you could somehow explain us as to what stands behind your thinking mm -hmm. when you're asking that question about how mm -hmm. should philosophy look like in these times. The chance to speak with you, not just today, but also over the last three days, has been really um, a wonderful opportunity to get to know you better, and to get to know your work, and also to meet your colleagues, to see your university, and all of in the context of this wonderful conference that you've organized, which I think has been truly a great success. A few disappointments, some people weren't able to join us, but many, many, many positive results. Let me try to respond to your uh, difficult question uh, very briefly right now, and perhaps we can come back to it at the end. First of all, you would probably agree with me right away that philosophy is not one thing. Philosophy is many things. That means that when we talk about what philosophy might look like in times like these, we have to qualify our remarks. We have to supplement them. We have to deepen them. We have to revise them. So exactly what might lie behind a rather uh, challenging expression which, as you know, arises from some anecdotes I also recounted at the conference, uh, exactly what lies behind the expression, what could philosophy look like in times like these, is probably um, the matter for another formal paper, if not a book. Let me say very briefly for now the following. Hegel famously said that philosophy is its own time, caught up in thought. He could have added that philosophy is also its own place caught up in thought. What lies in part behind my question, what might philosophy look like in times like these, is a very strong conviction I have, supported with some arguments, but certainly a conviction which is subject to revision. And that conviction is that at the end of this terrible century, at the beginning of another century, which has new and daunting challenges, we have to once again ask ourselves what it is that philosophy might be, how philosophy might at least begin to respond to its historical situation where it finds itself historically at this moment, and at the same time to what we might call its topography. Where is the location of philosophy? In what situation do we find ourselves today, temporally and spatially, when we begin to think about philosophy in a more critical way? So here's a first brief 
uh, start of a response to a question, uh, a beginning which I hope we might pick up on towards the end of this conversation.